This week on another Zelda podcast, we talk about the series' different interpretations of the Forest Dungeon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Zelda podcast. I am one of your hosts, David Geisler. I'm here with my co-host, Kate Fisher. Kate, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. I'm kind of well. I'm <laughs> I'm so sorry about my voice. I, I think I might be losing it just a little bit. I've recorded four podcasts in 24 hours, which is kind of an anomaly. Um, and I did, I was just getting over a cold a few days ago, so I can already tell right now, I think I might be losing my voice a little bit. I believe in you. You can do it. Oh, I'm definitely going to keep talking. <laughs> I'm just saying to our listeners who have to listen to my frog throat, um, I already apologize. But Kate, uh, you've been well since our last episode? Yeah, I have been starting to play Link's Awakening a little bit, which mm, I have not yeah. played before. So right. I'm starting to do that. Um, I've been playing more Breath of the Wild, kind of going back and forth between the two. I think we'll do a little bonus Breath of the Wild episode after our next episode, because right? I have a lot of questions to ask you. Maybe we'll just record oh, yeah. like a 15 minute bonus episode after episode three. Sound good? Sounds good. We are. I will. Yeah, I will. I'll kind of pull the curtain back here. Today, we are going to be recording our first and second episodes all at once because of schedules. And it's actually like it's like a Saturday morning right now that we're mm-hmm. recording these two episodes, which is not our normal intended schedule, but it's going to work out. And I'm a lot of I'm a lot of fun for it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm in the mood perfect. for it. Um, Kate, you uh, you had a wonderful New Year's Eve party about a week ago. I tried. I think it was pretty fun. Which I attended, and I had a great time. We that happened since I think our first episode uh, yep. was just about a week before that. Yep, it was great times. Thank you for throwing a great party. Of course. I don't think I got sick from that party, but I definitely got sick around the time of that party. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about forest dungeons. I'm really, really excited about this. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to be kind of a new thing for us when you when you think about doing a Zelda podcast. You think about, oh, well, we'll review all the games. Right. And actually, I was thinking, what if the first game that we full on actually review is Link's Awakening? Because I know that you're, I gave you that cartridge uh, at your New Year's Eve party, in fact. Yeah, it'll be fresh in my mind. You're playing it on a legit Game Boy Advance Advance, right now. Not even a Game Boy SP. So I think you don't even have like the front light or anything. I do not. It's, I forgot how difficult that can be sometimes. So I, I feel have to for you. sit in front of the lamp every time. But it's I fun. will lend you my Game Boy Player if you need it, if you need to play it on the TV, if it I'm gets good. too rough. I used to have the little curly cue purple light guy <laughs> yeah. for my for my Game Boy Advance, but that, I don't know, fell by the wayside at some point in time. But Well, as they so often do, I think I had a yellow one for mine. But then once I got my SP, to this day, I still play on the SP. Yeah. It's wonderful. Um, so, yeah, we're talking about Forest Dungeons today. We are not reviewing a specific game. I do have a, a couple. We did get a, a couple comments um, from our last episode, a little bit of listener feedback, and I just want to go over those real quick. So in our previous episode, even though our audience is welcome to listen to these things out of order, we can't help it. We record these in order because right. of time and the world and physics and the universe. Um, we had one comment by T.C. DeWitt, who actually, this is a coincidence, he messaged this before, but I was on his show last night. Yeah. He hosts a show called The Rewatchmen. Mm-hmm. And they re-review old movies, and we re-reviewed King Kong, and we also re-reviewed Batman, 1983, 1989's Batman, the, Tim, mm-hmm. the first Tim Burton one. It was a lot of fun, but I'm paying the price this morning for talking for hours and hours and hours. Um, TC actually, he comment to, commented to us on our Facebook page, kind of organically here. We were talking about the games that we have played, and he said that he played Ocarina of Time, Ocarina of Time. I'm going to get this right now. I got... <laughs> I got harassed a little bit for the oh, last really? episode, oh. which I get it. I think I was legitimately saying it wrong. It's an ocarina. Um, <laughs> I played Ocarina of Time, se- I, of Time several times and Majora's Mask twice. I played the original NES 2, but could never beat it. And did you say that you were never able to beat it either? I think he might be responding to that. Um, I have tried to play it and I could not get very far without just failing miserably. It's so much harder, um, I think. I was you- yeah. Any game that you start off with so little, so few hearts or so little amount of life. It can be it rough just, in the beginning. Yeah. Once you finally get like an upgraded sword, once you finally get the double, the half damage tunic and stuff like that, yeah. it finally starts coming around. But boy, that is kind of similar to the Breath of the Wild oh, stuff, Oh, no, I was going to say, I had the same exact problem with Breath of the Wild where now I'm running around and I'm like, everything is fine. I can beat anybody, whatever, right. la, la, la. And be- when I first started, I was getting so frustrated with it. I don't it. think I've died in Breath of the Wild in real world <laughs> months. And when I first, you know, that first two hours that you play, you die 10 times right. in Breath of the Wild. Right. 
because you're still learning how everything works. It gets like exponentially, not easier, but just, I don't know, you can deal with it. Everyone better. accidentally jumps off a cliff in that first hour, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Everyone can't believe that their stick broke super early, I'm sure, as they're fighting a, a goblin. <laughs> or, uh, so I, I, I looked this up after last week's episode. They're spelled, well, and everyone on the internet's saying Bokoblin when they're talking about the goblins in uh-huh. Breath of the Wild. I really interpret it as Bokoblin, but maybe I was just thinking it was supposed to sound like goblin. But everybody says Boca Blin. I don't try to pronounce it at all. I just say scary, squeaky sounding, angry guys. I did notice that the keys, which are the, the bats yeah. in Breath, they're called keys in the original. Yeah, those have been around for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. I think there was a time there where they might have actually been called bats, maybe Wind Waker or something, but I could be wrong. But anyway, um, yeah, so we heard from him. And then I actually had another piece of listener content that I wanted to comment about oh yeah mark rikers um on our facebook page here he uh, he commented on our facebook page which you can find by just searching another zelda pod um on the post of our first episode he said majora's mask zelda 2 wind waker as in obviously those were not our three favorites we talked about our three favorites do you have anything to say about that um, I actually liked uh, Wind Waker a lot. I'm not sure why I didn't, why that one didn't come into my mind, yeah. but I do, maybe just because I haven't played it in a little while, so it wasn't fresh in my mind, and it didn't, uh, I don't know, affect me as like viscerally as Ocarina of Time did, because that was like the first one that I really connected with, but no, yeah. I love Wind Waker. Um, Majora's yeah. Mask just drives me crazy, because that's a personal thing with where I don't like time anxiety. limits. I can, oh my goodness, the anxiety. I can't do... You only have so much time to do this. And there are pieces of that to like each Zelda game in a smaller kind of element. Yeah, some ca- like you like have a to, challenge. You have to carry this certain thing that will get cold or expires or something like that in a certain amount of time. And that all that alone makes me go, yeah. I don't, I the, can't do Some with of the it. Spirit Realm stuff in Skyward Sword <laughs> and Twilight Princess um, was always kind of anxiety ridden for me. I did not enjoy those segments oftentimes. Because it's like, so. you got to find... These things for no reason, but we made up a reason. And by the way, it's going to be hard and things are going to be looking for you. Do it. You're like, this isn't even a puzzle. I mean, <laughs> my, sometimes it's a puzzle, but. My thing is time limits. I can't do it. So that's my Fair reason. Enough. And I have friends who are very passionately um, enthusiastic about Majora's Mask, but I'm just not one of them. That's cool. Well, I know that Mark Rikers has the capability to create podcasts because he's made a few in the past. And so I invited him to maybe join us on one of the episodes where we, re- where we review one of these games. Cool. Maybe Zelda 2. Cool. Don't you think? Uh, technically, what is that? Link's Adventure. Link's. Uh, no, no. What is the actual title for Zelda 2? I don't know. I'm a bad Zelda fan. I'm a bad Zelda fan. Welcome to another Zelda podcast. <laughs> where we know nothing about not Zelda. not anything about Zelda. <laughs> But we really like it. I really like what I played. The Adventures of Link. That's Except what it is. Mask. It's, I think it's just The Adventures of Link. Ah. That's it. It's when they first started, Then because then it became subtitles after that. So I invited Mark to come on cool. and be a guest on one well, of our review will, episodes. He'll be much more knowledgeable than you or me, obviously, about that one. Yeah, least. yeah absolutely. In fact, I also heard back from um, Brian Tyson. He got in touch with us and said that he... He commented to us on our Facebook page. We're getting a lot of feedback on the Facebook page, which is cool. And Mr. Brian Tyson was talking about he, I don't know if he was, he messaged it on the wall. So I'm just going to say it. He said, I'm glad that you share my opinion that links, a link to the past is a little overrated, which is the Super Nintendo one. Gotcha. And I was like, oh, Brian, you, you feel me brother (laughs) so i invited him to maybe join us for an episode as well we'll see so everybody you can talk to us about the things we're about to speak about and the things we have spoken about by tweeting at us at another zelda pod or finding us on facebook which is really you can just search another zelda podcast we also have links to our facebook and twitter page and our youtube page you're welcome to if you're listening to us on youtube you can put stuff down in the comments um we're on youtube just by searching another zelda podcast our website is another Zelda podcast. I'm like trying not to die over here. Our podcast, our website is <laughs> another Zelda podcast.com. And that has links to all of these things as well. So Kate. So David. Forest temples. Let's do it. I have a bunch of notes here. Cool. It's kind of fun. Um, so, you know, when I think about forest temples, I, I made a list here. We both kind of, we used a Google drive here and we put together a bit of a list some some of these forest temples that we're going to be and you know what I should really be a little bit more specific forest dungeons. Right. So I did a little bit of research since last week's episode or whatever that you know two weeks ago when the episode came out, and there is a slight difference between a temple and a dungeon. So every single dungeons exist in all 
Zelda games, uh-huh. and sometimes dungeons are called temples. Yes. I make the mistake of us often calling them temples. So we're going to be talking about forest dungeons today. <laughs> And um, obviously, the first one that comes to mind is the Forest Temple from Ocarina. But I think we're going to save that okay. towards maybe the second half of this show. Okay. Um, there's a couple others that are, you know, Woodfall Temple in Majora's Mask. We have the, fo- the, the Forest Temple in Twilight Princess, which, mm-hmm. again, is kind of the spiritual reimagining of Ocarina. Wind Waker has the Forbidden Woods. And I'm actually, so since our last episode, I went ahead and downloaded Wind Waker HD on my Wii U. Okay. And I've been playing it, and I've made sure to get through the Forbidden Woods for this episode. In fact, I just played the Forbidden Woods Forest Temple like two days ago. Cool. So I'll be excited to talk about that. There's a couple other little honorable mentions. We have Spirit Tracks has a Forest Temple, Mm -hmm. and Skyward Sword has the Skyview Temple, and it's in like the Farron Woods area. And I think it it might as well be a forest temple. In my opinion, it has all the makings of a forest temple. It yep. has vines that you have to climb. It has some ropes you have to climb, some hookshot type of situations. Yep. And we'll talk about that as well. Um, there was a few temples that I chose not to include. There are some temples out there that get... Sometimes there's a gray line between like a forest temple and like a wind temple. Mm, yes, lots of connections in every game kind of with that, but some more than others. A lot sure. of times wind is used in forest temples. Sometimes there's wind temples that have a forest aesthetic, yep. but I chose to save those for another day. Sometimes they couldn't make up their mind which theme they wanted to focus more on of the two because they've always been somewhat connected. It's true because how do you express a f- express a forest? I mean, vines, I guess, wood, forest, logs, trees. Yeah, forest isn't really an element, so to speak, like the fire and water. Oh, ones that's a very good point. Are, but wind would be. And then there is that them. one. There's a temple in. Uh, oh, I can't remember exactly, but there's like a specifically a wind temple that. Is not forest themed. It's up in the air. T- oh, Twilight Princess has that one. Yes, yes, the, yes, yes. With the little lady chickens. The uh, ukus? How do you say that? I don't. I'll get it I wrong. I don't know. I guarantee I'll get it it's wrong. It's spelled like uku, but I don't know if that's actually correct. You know what? I think I'm going to switch it up here. Why don't we start by talking about the Ocarina Forest Temple? Okay. I was going to save it for the end, but let's just like dive right into the meat here. This is, I think, like my OG Forest Temple. (laughs) Well, it is many people's. Yeah. Um, I was looking very hard into Link to the Past um, to try to see if I could suss out the the equivalent of a Forest Temple. And in my opinion, I could not. Hmm. I am trying to. I know that I'm not in love with A Link to the Past, but I am replaying it right now and I am trying to. Like, find the good in it. And I think Mm -hmm. the reason people loved it so much is that when you compare it to A Legend of Zelda and Link's Adventures, I think it probably did shine back when those were the only three games. Right. But for me, the cartoon aesthetic and, and I don't know, it just didn't work, but that's okay. (laughs) So, um, Forest Temple, Ocarina. Uh Uh-huh. I see you have some notes. I'm going to hand this over to you for a second. Yeah. What was it like for you the first time you approached it? Because, oh, there is some trends with Forest Temples. They're often... One of the first temples you play in a game, yes. if not the first. That's kind of why I like them a whole lot. It's almost like a tutorial of sorts, or at least it gets you acclimated to yep. what you will be doing for the rest of the game. So, And they're usually not mind-numbingly difficult, so that is also why I like them. They're manageable. Now, the forest temple in Ocarina is maybe the first temple, but it's actually the fourth kind of real temple you're in, because you do have those three previous no, that's pseudo true. temples, you know, yep. when yep. you're a kid. And some might argue that the Deku tree... Would classify, you know, be classified kind as a forest of. temple, and it kind of is, but it's not. And you get a good weapon in that one too. I would say it's a dungeon, <laughs> sure, not a temple, sure. But um, let's talk about the forest temple. I loved the forest temple in Ocarina. Me too. It was it was the first moment in Ocarina where I legitimately started getting kind of stuck. You know, when oh, you're yeah. a kid, I got so stuck in there the first time I tried to. For play the it. most part, Deku Tree. Maybe <laughs> some people. Maybe it takes some time to figure out. Oh, I got to break through the. Big old spider web. To yep. even learn that that's a mechanic that can happen. Yes. is not necessarily intuitive. Right. I agree. First come upon it. Um, then you've got the Goron stuff and uh, the, some of that Zora stuff. That's all well and good. That's fine. You have your three gems and you travel to Old Link. But that was the first time. The Forest Temple for me is the first time where I was like, oh, dang, I'm in. Like, the, oh, this is a game. Yep. Um, there was many reasons why it felt that way, but I want to ask you what some of those reasons were for you as I take a sip of water. <laughs> um, there are just a lot of elements to it that I really liked. I really liked the music for one thing, 
which was kind of... Oh, that's so funny. We got a comment about that. Keep talking. Creepy and odd and like the little woodwind instrument. I don't know. I just remember those little, I don't tune or noises. I don't know what would... It would be more classified as we yeah. just get kind of stuck in my head. So <laughs> I actually... <laughs> I, you're right. Absolutely. I reached out on Twitter through our Twitter account. I reached out to Joe Heiser, who goes by at Ju- Juicebox343. And he's one of the co-hosts of a podcast, a Zelda podcast called Tandem Legends. Cool. It's a cool little show. Uh, they only started it about six months ago, but I've been really having fun with it. Nice. It's a very different format than our show. So I really want to be friends with them because they're super cool. What they're doing is it's him and this other gal. And they're basically playing through every Zelda game in chronological order according to the Hyrule Historia timeline. Yeah. So they just, they're 17 episodes in and they just finished playing Skyward Sword. Okay. They're going to have to play like three games at once. I don't know what they're going to (laughs) do. I looked on their website. They have it kind of, I think they're going to kind of go left to right when it splits into three different timelines. Gotcha. Um, Or maybe right to left, actually, now that I think about it. But it doesn't really matter. The next game they're going to start up is obviously Minish Cap. And then I think um, Ocarina comes after that. So it's kind of fun. They'll play a couple hours of gameplay and discuss it every week. So I reached out to him and I said, hey, we're doing a Forest Temple episode. Do you have any favorites? Mm -hmm. Oh, because also one of the gimmicks of Tandem Legends is that Joe has played many Zelda games. And the gal whose name I'm so sorry, I can't remember right now, but she goes by at modern moxie at modern underscore moxie. Um, I think she has p- played no Zelda games. Oh. So it's, they, there's a lot of cool conversations, and I'm having a lot of fun yeah. listening to that show. So he said, he said, oh, hey, awesome a discussion idea. For myself, I got to say, nothing can beat the atmosphere in Ocarina's Forest Temple. Mm-hmm. I was like 10 when I first entered that dungeon, and to this day, that music still sends shivers up my spine. Yeah. And he also said, and that room with the wall master, terrifying. We'll get to that in a moment. So the music, so it's so funny because the music doesn't stand out for me. I don't remember it very much. But please speak to that a little bit more. Um, well, maybe that's just because it fits so well in the temple that you wouldn't think about it. I don't know, but... It, I do recall it feeling very atmospheric. Yeah, very like, atmospheric, a little bit creepy, which that whole temple is a little bit creepy. Some elements definitely it's more creepy. It's a lot creepy creepier than you expect than it to be. Yes. You You're are like, oh, like, the forest temple. But yeah. it gets it gets spirity quick. Yes. Um... I don't know. I just that music. Uh, I can remember better than others, except for some, you know the the specific songs that you mm-hmm. learn. But out of the temple um, soundtracks, if you will, that is the one that sticks out to me the most. And I just I don't know. I always really liked it. I, I will never get tired of running through that temple. Fair enough. I do recall, like you know, even as you approach it. It's the first time where you kind of don't even know how to get into the temple, yeah. if I remember correctly. They're there's... usually like weird, somewhat inaccessible, and you need something to get into it. And you use the hook shot, correct? Yes. Isn't that for this one? Yeah. Um, I am currently replaying the master quest for Ocarina. I'm kind of like playing a lot of... <laughs> because we started this podcast now, I'm diving into many. I'll kind of jump over and do an hour in Link to the Past. I'll mm-hmm. jump over and do a temple in Wind Waker HD. Mm-hmm. I, was, uh, I picked up oracle of ages again and i'm about a temple or two into that a dungeon or two into that and i am slowly going through master quest however (laughs) with that said i think it's been about 10 years since i have personally played the uh forest temple in ocarina oh wow so it's been a while but if i remember correctly you like you do have to use the hook shot to like hook up on some branches yep and again it's one of those moments where you're like oh this is a thing i can do because you know it's not expressed totally that you can hook shot into all of the things that are wood and you start to learn that yep um, if we can go away from the music just for a second, no. I also, okay. Um, yes, I really, like, other parts of it that I really enjoy, um, which I wanted to mention are, is the twisting hallway. That's like, so the twisting hallway is so where cool. I fell in love with that temple. Yeah. Because it's not just, oh, this looks cool. Like you have to use it. It's a mechanic in the game. You can only access certain places when it's a straight shot hallway. You can only mm-hmm. access a different place when it's a twisty hallway. And I loved that. I was like, oh. <gasps> It blew this my is mind. So cool. Yeah, it did. It was another one of those moments where I was like, this is real. Yeah. This is a real puzzle. Yeah. Um, I, so when you first get in there, if I remember correctly, you kind of see the four Poe sisters. Am I not? Am I mistaken? Uh, and they like, they jump yeah. off into and their like little, the you got to find yep. their four. Oh, is that the second? Yeah, the second room so of the temple. you had to deal with some wolves, if I remember correctly, in the very first part. So you're absolutely right. You hook shot up into the main door. Mm-hmm. Then you go into like that little pre-room. Yep. You're right. You're right. And uh, there's two there's wolves, a key to get in there which too. I do remember in the master quest. Those wolves aren't there, and they actually are in the temple later. Oh, it gets real. I, I really, really want wanna, you. To, I want you to play master quest. I, was so say, bad. I really want to play that. 
Maybe in a couple months, we'll do a Master Quest review episode. It'll be after you have time to play it as well. Awesome. And honestly, if I need to, I'll just dive in deep on that one. I'm having a lot of fun with Wind Waker HD right now. I'm loving it. But maybe I'll dive in deep on Master Quest. We'll decide later. Um, Yeah, so yeah, you do fight the wolves. You go in and you find some Poes. Uh-huh. Four of them. Four. And they all book in their respective directions. Yep. And essentially, you realize pretty quickly, oh, I have to relight these candles. Mm -hmm. And you do it by bringing the post spirits back to the candles. And don't you use, do you use a bottle to do that? No. What is it? Uh, Again, it's been about 10 years for me. I believe, so after you defeat them using the arrows into the paintings, and then you actually kind of battle with them, if you will, I think you just go back into the room and they appear there? You know what? I think after you defeat them, you're right. The, the Don't the, use a bottle. I know the, that much. No, I think you're absolutely right. I'm confusing that with time, other times where you pick up spirits with bottles. Yeah. But um, you're right. I think that flame, their spirit flame or whatever, kind of just, just kind of goes back. back. Yeah. And eventually you get back <laughs> there. And um, that opens up the second half of the temple where you start getting these massive kind of like almost courtyard feeling rooms with the, yeah. with the rivers and the bridges. And you're re-entering those rooms from above and below. Yeah. And it was... Cool, because all of a sudden you're like in this spot where it's not just tight little rooms. It's a big open area. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the twisty hallway comes into play. Isn't that right? I'm not sure I remember. I think so. I think it's as you travel from one of the courtyards to the other. I just remember, I believe one of the rooms where that horrible thing comes out of the ceiling is connected to one of the... Is right after one of the hallways. Horrible thing that comes out of the ceiling. What oh, yeah. When you're standing there and it says, oh, beware of monsters on the ceiling. And Kid Me went, oh, my God, what? Is and that the hands that the come hands down? The hands that come down. Oh, which sure, sure, are, sure. I think my least favorite part, just because they still freak me out to They're this day. It makes me yeah. anxious because the shadow's coming down. And I shadow. try to get out of there as quickly as humanly possible. And they possible. pull you back to the front of the temple, I think, right? I think so, yeah. Which is exactly what the hands did in the original. Legend of Zelda. Oh. They pull you back to the front of the temples. I hate those hands. And by the way, even though we'll talk about this a little bit later, the Spirit Tracks Forest Temple has a play on those hands, which I'll oh, talk about when okay. we get to the get to the spirit. Yeah, those hands are the worst. They are always the worst enemy. They're scary because you can't see them, and then they come out of nowhere. And I just don't like it. Well, you technically can see what those shadows. But I yeah, know, I get but it. I get it. It gives me anxiety. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly enough, but. A lot of the monsters in this dungeon are creepy and weird and terrible. Mm-hmm. So one of the other things that I remember about... Yeah, you're right. I mean, this is definitely cool atmospheric. I, it's funny because other forest temples aren't as creepy. They mm-hmm. tend to become a little lighter. Certainly, like, the Forbidden Woods in Wind Waker is, is significantly less creepy. I don't remember Skyward Swords being... No, that was more just kind of like... It almost felt jungly. It was more just like a bunch of branches yep. and you're, it's more puzzle, puzzle yeah. stuff. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, this one definitely gets dark fast and it gets gets foggy fast. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember also, this is the first temple you have as adult Link. So you are missing your slingshot. And I remember missing yes. it in a big way. Like yeah. being disappointed that I couldn't yeah. have a projectile. I, I remember that too. When you you go through your weapons inventory and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. I can't use I that can't anymore. Use that. That's I'm my too favorite. big for a slingshot. That's my favorite weapon. So of course that's rectified in this temple by giving you the bow. Which... Also awesome. Some of these, you know, other temples, you don't get the best weapon as like your big, this is your (laughs) gift. And the fairy bow is, I just like bows throughout all the games. That's probably my second favorite thing to use. The first favorite (laughs) would be the, the, no, the hook shot. I mean, the sword is just kind of like a given to me. I don't see it as like a special. I agree. I guess it's just like part of your sword and shield, just part of the basic package mm-hmm. to me, I guess. So the, the I guess the bonus weapons. I like Man, the, those double hook shots in Twilight. I was in, I was like, yeah. I'm Spider-Man. Yeah, <laughs> that's I love the hook shot. But the bows, I mean, I love using the bow in Breath of the Wild and the fairy bow in Ocarina is just awesome. I love it. It's cool. And then, of course, in typical dungeon fashion, you, are, you, you use the bow on the final boss. Yep. I was captivated with this main boss for this dungeon in fact it's interesting because this entire dungeon has kind of a picture theme to it the poses are stuck in pictures mm-hmm. you have to get them out of the pictures our yeah. final boss is ganon going from picture, picture to picture that, yep. to picture and i think that's interesting because when um miyamoto was designing what was called zelda 64 back in the olden days of course which it was. became ocarina um, when they were designing it, they weren't sure how much memory they were going to have. And for a while, he seriously thought that they might have to make all of that game happen just in Ganon's castle. 
And he thought this might have to be kind of like Mario 64, where we have a hub world. Sure. And then we load up our other worlds. Yeah. You know, they didn't know how much. Via pictures. Yeah. Well, via pictures. Mm -hmm. And so this picture theme in the Forest Temple, I have read, um, is emblematic of that and definitely an artifact of that design process. Cool. So it's very picture intensive for that reason. Apparently, the Forest Temple was around very early on. In the design of this game. Mm-hmm. And so Ganon jumping from picture to picture is cool. They do a little bit of a perspective trick because those pictures are 2D, but they shrink the 3D model of Ganon uh-huh. as he rides into the yeah. picture. So when you are standing in the middle of the room, the perspective lines up. And I remember legitimately being scared by Phantom Ganon jumping from <laughs> thing to thing. I was, it was challenging for me. Like, that's not an easy, like, first big boss to come across. Like, I, to this day, I'm like, a little have a little trouble with it just because he keeps turning around or you don't know exactly where he's coming from and often oh that's right he'll fake you out sometimes and then he'll go by so fast sometimes you don't have a chance to Mm -hmm. get him with the arrow but i'm now having a hard time remembering you hit him with the arrow and then do you have does he fall you hit him with the sword or is it really just the arrow i think he falls you hit him with the sword but then there's some shield action back and forth well because they're prepping you for the final battle exactly which also that repeats in wind waker yep yep the whole volleying back and forth thing is a common theme. Oh yeah, in many Zelda games, which mm-hmm. is fine. So this is like a a big boss for you know, absolutely your first temple. You know, I almost wonder. I'm just imagining this. I wonder if there are elements of this that were going to be the final Ganon fight when the game was in really, really early development. Because mm-hmm. I know that many parts of this temple continued to live. You know, they, was, they started building this temple before they really knew what the game was going to be. Ah. I know that for a fact. And so that's kind of interesting. Um, let's see. So let's talk about some other aspects of this. You're getting beeps and boops over there on your phone. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm very <I> popular. <laughs> um, any st- other standout things about the Ocarina Forest Temple? Um, I think that's basically all I had written down for the time being. Mm-hmm. It was just... It was a very effective temple. It yeah. was a definitive temple. It trained you well mm-hmm. in many ways. It was definitely the first temple that I died in a couple of times where I truly was trying to figure out real puzzles, not just kind of going along with it, you know? Yeah. Forest temples are, like I said, I think I said before, always my favorite just because they're kind of one of the first things you come upon. You kind of really learn how to play this game with mm-hmm. forest temples. So. This forest temple does not have a wind mechanic in it, which later becomes no. a bit of a theme. That's true. Maybe that's why I like this one so much, too, because the wind. <laughs> mechanics i don't think i'm a huge fan of so um well let's at least tra- in let's, Twilight Princess. i wasn't really sure what we were going to go to next but let's talk about um the wind waker wind mechanic then okay in the forbidden woods i kind of i'll just do an honorable mention of the woodfall temple in majora's mask it um it's in like the deku it's, it's the most foresty area of of majora's mask in my opinion okay it's more of a swamp you might recall um, that first kind of area you go with all the Deku scrubs and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit more swampy, but it, once you get to once you open up that dungeon, it's the closest to a forest temple. So we won't talk about that one too much. But um, so in Wind Waker, I personally just played the Forbidden Woods. Yeah. Like I said, almost 48 hours ago. And I played it uh, on Wind Waker HD. So this is what happened after last two weeks. Ep- I'll just say last week's episode. We're, these come out every other week, but mm-hmm. whatever. In our last episode, that's the right way to say it. In our last episode, after that, I went home and I was like, man, I'm jonesing for some Wind Waker. <laughs> Must play Zelda. Yeah. And so I took out my old uh, GameCube and I plugged it in through one of those like RCA to HDMI adapters and then brought it in through my system then i loaded it up and i started playing it with my gamecube controller uh-huh. and i also remember in our last episode you and i talking a little bit about really enjoying the gamecube controls yes in twilight princess and in wind waker and immediately i was like oh yeah this feels good again <laughs> it feels intuitive and yeah and it was really blurry and it was fine i liked it but there was something that blew my mind the control stick and the c stick in gamecube wind waker in gamecube wind waker mm-hmm. are inverted for looking in for camera controls and looking are inverted. Oh, that would trip me out at first. So back in the day, that was a very common thing. Back in the day, that was like um back in the day that was exactly how those sticks worked. Because it was a relic from the it was a relic from the C buttons on the 64 controller. Uh-huh. So oh, yeah. when you use buttons, pushing down for up and pushing up for down mm-hmm. feels intuitive because it feels like you're kind of moving the joystick of the camera sure. on the tripod. But once the controllers switched over like the C stick on the GameCube, people started that invert 
that Invert carried over. But after Halo and after many other things, just the community of gaming, people started preferring non-inverted things. Mm. So in Breath of the Wild, it's not inverted. And not these days, they'll give you the option to go back to invert if you need, yeah. yep. which is fine. And I think they did that in Twilight as well. They do not do that in Wind Waker on GameCube. I feel like I remember being confused by the by that in Wind Waker. It's definitely pushed the C stick down to look up and whatever. And back in the day, I was perfectly happy with inverted controls. But this time around, it was hard. Yeah. And I was trying to be cool about it. I played up to um, the first temple on GameCube. Which is not the Forbidden Woods. It's the it's the dungeon bait. It's the uh, volcano. Okay. With yeah. the dragon. So you get your kind of your hook shot, but it's actually the grappling hook. So I played up to that part on is GameCube. Is the island? Well, like, they're all islands. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So I guess I meant the first it's where the, one where it's you the get there by the cannon. that you meet the Rito. Oh, ever. See, okay. I'm thinking of something else. So you don't consider the place where you f- get to via cannon as like the first... Dungeons. So oh, to speak? technically, technically, yeah, where you're the, sneaking the around. Jail. I think th- that's like the Deku tree for me. That's like a warm up ah, okay. dungeon. But you're right. Anyway, it is considered a dungeon. You're 100 percent correct. Island, she says. All right. <laughs> Carry on. Um. So, uh, the Forbidden Woods by that by that right then is the third dungeon in Wind Waker. Gotcha. So anyway, yeah, I was playing on the GameCube and I was like, oh my god, I want to replay this game so bad. Like I almost can't right now. <laughs> I wasn't losing my temper, but it was like every time I cranked on those sticks. Um. It was going the wrong way. Every time I was trying to aim my <laughs> arrow, my camera, everything, it was bad. And oh. I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And then I did a little bit of research and found out that the Wind Waker controls, Wind Waker HD on Wii U, are not inverted. Mm. And I don't think... They just it, like to mess with you. Well, because you know, the standards, the way the camera system works, they had changed it by then. Gotcha. So I went into the Wii U store and I saw that the game was only $20 and I was like, oh boy, that is fine. I don't know because I really <laughs> wanted to play it anyway. And I knew, I know that there's, it's not just aesthetic with Wind Waker HD. I know that there are some tweaks to the gameplay that they did. Oh, okay. And they I haven't tweak- played HD, the HD version. I got to tell you, I'm loving it right now. I am absolutely loving it. And it's intuitively obvious that... They were testing out some of the lighting for Breath of the Wild in that engine. Oh. It's intuitively obvious that they were testing out the camera system in Wind Waker HD for Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. Some of the way the shadows are rendered, it's very clear. Um, some of the way things are loading in, the way that they're blurring things and not blurring things, which is making it feel like it's focus. <coughs> Pardon me. Hmm. Wow. I almost can't talk right now. Um Unfortunately for you, you're the one that played this one most recently, so you'd have the most to say. I know. Do you, let me ask you this just while I take a drink of water. Do you recall much about Forbidden Woods? I'll give you a hint. It was the first time that we got a Deku leaf, which later became things like the paraglider mm. and the sailcloth. I guess I do remember that part, but other than that, not so much. If I, I should look up pictures it's of it. It's a very probably... vertical temple. I remember getting in there, and immediately you have to you have to jump into those Deku bulbs that throw you up into the oh, air yeah, you have to fly around that. big huge thrashing you know piranha plant vines kind of things flipping all over the place a tremendous amount of choo-choos in that temple in the beginning <coughs> i'm gonna look up some images so it can many of the doors are mind me but many of the doors are locked so to speak by like weird eyeballs that close when you get close oh yeah so you have to figure out so the puzzles of like to... throwing nuts at them yeah. or throwing bombs at them which of course halfway through the temple in typical zelda fashion is rectified because you get the boomerang, and then you can boomerang those eyeballs. <laughs> boomerang those eyeballs. Mm-hmm. Very important. Um, so in Wind Waker HD, okay. I am in love with the controls. They even let you use some of the gyroscope stuff. So it's like I mapped my boomerang to my R button, and I just hold down R, and I gyro to aim, and it feels just like Breath of the Wild, and it's awesome. Cool. All right, see, looking at all these pictures on Google, which is what I'm doing right now to jog my memory, is making me want to play it again. It's wonderful. Um, The boss is that big, huge uh, plant bulb thing. Yep. You might recall. The mid-boss was just like that bug that spits all of its um, little babies out of its rear end. Yeah, it, there's that seems to be a theme, by the way, is is in Zelda animals games? that that shoot their babies at you or eggs or there's yeah. a lot of spider. I think from a des- game design point of view, I think it's a smart thing. From a logistics point of view, it's kind of gross. It's it's very gross. So they inc- they introduce you to those weird little spiky bulbs, which with eyes on them that attach to you. Uh-huh. Oh, and yeah. they slow you down. You can't jump and stuff like that. Yep. And you later learn that they're coming from a big butterfly bug. 
and that's the mid boss that gives you the the uh, oh, yeah, boomerang. Okay. Yep. And then you go back through the dungeon, and it was shockingly larger than I recall. <laughs> it was much more involved than I recall. There's a little bit of a wind mechanic, so you're using the Deku leaf not just to fly mm-hmm. like a sailcloth, but you're also using it to blow. I was gonna say you, sh- you little turbines, shoot air, yeah, which comes back in Twilight Princess. Mm-hmm. So maybe we transition to Twilight Princess right now. Okay. Um. And which I'm going to give to you. I do have a couple notes about Twilight Princess for its temple. One of the things I remember is really loving the look of it. Yes. I thought I mean, it that's was a theme gorgeous for Twilight Princess for me, but yeah. And realistic yep. and dirty and it felt <laughs> cool. I'm going to hand it over to you. Um, that one, uh, I do not have the same fondness for from Ocarina of Time just because sure. of the... A, I don't love the Gale Boomerang. I don't find it useful for very much, um, which I actually found out it's useful for grabbing bugs, which I did not do. When Um, you did your replay? I replayed um, before our last episode, Mm -hmm. where so I was able to kind of talk more about it. But um, yeah, the first few times I had played Twilight Princess, I didn't even care about the bugs. I was like, "Mm, whatever. I'm not one to get heavily invested in side quests if there's no, like... Real, really good payoff for it. Like the collectathon stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, the one in Ocarina of Time, I I do like that side quest to get like the sword. Well, no, I do want to point out. In my opinion, there is a bit of a difference between like a um a quest chain, uh, a collect chain, where it's like collect this thing to get that thing to get that thing to get that thing to get that thing to get one big thing at the end. Yeah. And like a collectathon, which maybe this is just. Stupid, oh, I see what like, you're saying. Where it's like get the fifty spiders to get the bigger bag. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, those I don't. The the latter I don't really care much about but this time i'm I was very like, passive with them i'm kind of like if i get enough like in breath of the wild it's like if i find a deku nut or a then or i'll a bring it Kokiri. to that person yeah or oh yeah that yeah thing. the little guys yeah that yeah. are in wind waker by the way wind waker hd yeah polygon for polygon those little kakiri kids are the same in breath of the wild oh I it is the that. exact same model so and i was gonna ask sorry to go back to wind waker but it. i was gonna ask is that the first time you see the koroks as korok as, thank you i uh, said kakiri which is actually the human form of them in yeah, ocarina exactly um so but is that the first time you see them in wind waker wind waker is the first time you see them expressed as those weird little okay. branchy That's things what i thought and mm-hmm. then they kind of just they kind of stay that, that way. way yeah um in those order of re- game release however can Can can, canonically in the timeline, Mm -hmm. they kind of go back and forth a little bit. Gotcha. Because I think they're humans in Ocarina. Yes, because that's where you start out. And And tech, you know, if you really are getting weird about it, like technically they actually evolve back into the little critters. But anyway, how odd. Well, it's you know, it's 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 more of like a lot of retconning. Honestly, it's a lot of retconning the canon to like, wow, then they turned into this, and then like, oh, then the Zoras did this. Like technically, the Rito came from the Zora, which I. I don't know if I can subscribe to that. But anyway. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Um, okay, so going back to Twilight Princess. Um, mm-hmm. Well, may I say one thing about yeah. the boomerang? Yeah, yeah. It was very clear in that in Wind Waker, the boomerang is more of a cutting yes. tool. You use it to cut things. You often use it to on Deku uh, uh, plants. You can use them to chop their little necks off. You can use them on ropes. You use it on everything. Yeah. Clearly in Twilight Princess, it's more of a wind mechanic. Yeah, and that's why I don't like it as much. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. I did not end up using it very much throughout that game. And so when it's you get like that as like... more like the tornado tool your, than it is the boomerang. Yeah, and when you get that out of, as a prize, you're just like, oh, yay. <laughs> At least mm-hmm. in my view. And also, I hate the monkeys. The monkeys are unfortunate. The monkeys first appear in the game you are right, playing right now in Game Boy. Oh, in Link's Awakening is the first time you fi- you uh, encounter a couple monkeys of that same art style and everything. Oh, interesting. And then they reappear in Oracle of Ages and Seasons in a, in a good way, in a cool way, in a fun way. And then I remember playing Twilight and being like, oh, it's the monkeys from Oracle of Ages. And then I was like, oh, I'm just. Oh, they basically do nothing. Like, I mean, they carry you across the gaps. And at the end, like toward the end of the dungeon, they're obviously more useful when you have to get to the boss. But... I will acknowledge and... Um, um uh I will acknowledge and applaud that Nintendo was trying to mask keys and maybe give their a bit of a narrative thread where the monkeys introduced as a character before the temple. Sure. The monkeys get lost in the temple, the monkeys help you at the end of the temple. Right. Like I I'm glad that it's not just like enter the temple, do the thing. They try to like give a little bit of storyline through it. I'm just not a fan of the monkeys, but I will I give know. them the credit for that. Yeah, I don't know. It's not my favorite. 
um, mechanic to get me through a dungeon. I think because monkeys. you can kind of see through the scenes. It's like they really are just keys to a door. And yeah. they're a little annoying. And yeah. they sound a little annoying. And it's like, ugh, whatever. Right. Um, I remember in the Forest Temple in Twilight Princess, legitimately, and I'm a little embarrassed to say this, legitimately taking a little bit of time to realize that I needed to roll and crack myself into that totem to get one of the monkeys down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like doing everything. I was sword hitting. I was like looking around the room. I'm like, okay, there's a boulder. I need something. I need to swipe a vine and make a log fall. I need to do something. And then I finally just accidentally rolled into it. I was like, that's what I needed to do. <laughs> I just got to hit my noggin on a I pole. hit my noggin on this totem. <laughs> Uh huh. At least they do tell you, like they give you the map and they tell you where the monkeys are, and they do tell you once you get to the big open room, like how many you need to find, which is helpful. So yeah, that's true. That's something. But I don't know. In general, I'm always kind of relieved when I'm done with that. Uh, let's talk about the main boss in the Forest Temple for Twilight. It was a fun one. Yeah. The big old plant. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Always, it's always a big old plant. This one was kind of a reimagining of the Wind Waker plant, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. The Wind Waker plant's a big bulby thing, and you definitely use the boomerang to chop down the stuff above it. Well, in uh, this case, Audrey two action. This one is a bit more Audrey two. This one has actual <laughs> mouths and things that snap at you, which li- lines up. It's really more of like a mutant version of like the Deku um, plants. They're called the Deku plants, yeah, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm I am totally willing for our listeners, I am willing and prepared to not know exactly what I'm talking about sometimes on this show. I just love Zelda so <laughs> Me much. Me too. Like if I don't remember exactly the name, I'm sorry. We'll try to do all, as much research as possible before these things, but anyway. And so this is the boss that comes back like three times, this right? You think Diababa. it's dead and it comes back and you think it's dead and it comes back and then you think it's dead and it comes back again. Yeah, and then you it's have true. to um Get the, if I'm right, you have to use the boomerang to grab the bomb from the monkeys going back and forth. I think you're right. Yeah. And then get that into the plant. I, yeah, I'm not a, I don't know. I'm not as much of a fan of the bosses that you have to fight from a distance. I like to be able to like okay. get all up in there. So ones that you have to use certain things to that's, get I mean, other that's things be our, to shoot it at the third thing. I think that's going to be our promotional tweet for this episode. Kate Fisher likes to get all up in there. I like to get all up in there mm-hmm. and just hack away with the sword. That's fair. I mean, and usually the mechanic from most <coughs> Zelda is doing that, yeah. things is like you do a puzzly thing with your item to get into a sweet spot and then hack away. Yep. And get all up in there. And this one is not at all like that, but that's okay. It's a different kind of challenge. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't know if I have. So yeah, you're right. Even the Wind Waker one, it was use the bro- use the boomerang and then get up to that little guy and hack away. So maybe people would actually like this boss because it's different. I don't know. It was a little more puzzly. Yep. Yeah, because the monkeys they're throwing the bombs back and forth up above. If I remember correctly, they're sliding from one end to another That's on like a is. rope, and That's you have to grab is. the bomb as they're going past. So yeah, it's a little bit of a challenge. Um, let's talk a little bit about kind of. So in Breath of the Wild, we have actual. Physic, an actual physics engine running, a legitimate physics engine running that Nintendo bought. It's the it's the Havoc physics engine, I think, actually, is what's running in Zelda Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. For Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and there was one other game where I thought there was a little bit of that. There is there is not, Ocarina does not have real physics. Wind Waker has some physics, to my surprise. Mm-hmm. There were some legitimate, like, throw a bomb in a in a middle of a bottle and that bomb bounced kind of realistically and stuff uh-huh. while I was in the forest temple. But one thing, in my opinion, where the wind, where it is not, the physics are not realistic, is the wind mechanic in the Wind Waker Forest Temple and the Twilight Princess Forest Temple. Mm-hmm. It's very clearly just kind of like a gun. A, it's like the wind gun. Yeah, it's and a switch. Let's talk about that a little bit. So it sounds, if I am guessing correctly, based on what you were saying earlier, it sounds like you found that to be a little frustrating. You have to like, shoot your wind gun at the twisty thing and then it moves a thing or it doesn't move a thing. I just did. I just wasn't that intrigued by it. So in Wind Waker, you use it to move like almost like those little gondola carts across. They'll be on ropes and you you blow the, you blow the fan at the thing and then it'll move them. I found it incredibly frustrating because the physics weren't consistent. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to blow to the left or the right of one. Sometimes you just blow at one and it felt, it was very frustrating, to be honest. Yep. And I remember similar things in Twilight Princess. In Twilight Princess, I think you're using the Gale <laughs> boomerang to mo- uh, literally spin the rotate, platforms and yep, stuff, right? Rotate platforms. Were you, frust- were you frustrated by that? Or I, was just, it okay? I just wasn't interested by it. It's like, uh, okay, I'm just hitting something on something else to turn something. I just oh, wasn't that. It's just that's what a made the boomerang not that interesting to me. Because, yeah, it's just flipping a switch. Flipping a switch. Very interesting. I remember aesthetically... 
very much enjoying oh, yeah. the variety in the Twilight Princess Forest Temple. Where all of a sudden I was like, ooh, I'm outside now. Ooh, it's so windy. Yeah. Oh, it's this and that. Like, <laughs> Do that I need was cool. my boots? There was a lot more particles, literally like particle effects and things flying through the air. Yep. And um, Link's hair and, and pieces of fabric legitimately flying well, yeah. in the wind, which mm-hmm. had a little bit of like an implied physics thing. There's a little bit of that in Wind Waker as well. Link's hair will do things. Oh, yeah. And so I think they were kind of building that engine when they did Twilight. Ooh, I'd like to do some research. I wonder if the Twilight engine is the same as the Wind Waker engine, like at, at its core. Yeah. You know, I'll do a little bit of research on that. That's interesting. Well, let's uh, talk about some other um, things. We have the we have the Skyview Temple at, uh, in Skyward Sword, uh-huh. which now if you're playing it in order of release, this is now the next kind of forest temple Mm -hmm. certainly in the in the uh timeline though it's the first time we experience a forest temple yep would you like to speak about it at all Um, there's a few things that stick out for me yep this one i I think i'm kind of middle of the road about um Mm -hmm. i know you get the beetle in this one as like your your tool your prize and not a huge fan of the beetle either i thought it was okay it's okay um, and that one, this one, actually, you can use to cut ropes and yeah, vines and stuff. So Back it's, like, cutting. more useful than a gale boomerang in a way. Yeah, I agree. Maybe. Um, but I don't know. The beetle, I'm kind of meh. But you use the beetle throughout that entire game, you, too. You, yeah, yeah. Like, the whole game. You're not just using the gale boomerang in the, you know, forest area, and then not much after that you don't have that to. That beetle definitely comes back. That beetle comes back throughout <sighs> the entire game for various reasons, so... In that way, it's good because it's actually useful and an important part of the game. And then um, <clears throat> I this felt, one... I remember... Oh, I'm so sorry. I was taking a sip of water, but I wanted to say, I remember kind of like the, one of the problems with Skyward Sword, in my opinion, is that it was so... This is a this is a bit... This is more of like a meta thing. In game, it's never spoken about. But outside of the game, so much of the promotion of Skyward Sword was, hey, remember when you'd swing Link's sword with your Wiimote and it wasn't one-to-one? It's finally one-to-one. Finally, mm-hmm. exactly how you move is exactly how Link moves. And so when I got the beetle and you have to hold your controller and kind of paper Aim airplane it. your controller oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. move the beetle, man, every single mechanic in Skyward Sword, it was kind of like, all right, Nintendo, this is cool, question mark, but it really feels like this is just a really fancy version of WarioWare or something like that. Sure. Like, oh, you just, you're just taking every single stinking way that you can use the to new use Wii Motion thing, Plus. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this other thing you can do. And it's executed, with that said, it's executed well. The beetle works well, all things considered, flying it around. Until you hit a wall, but sure. Wait, well, yeah, hitting the wall is the <laughs> thing. That's the and, like, goal, is to not do that. a little fun having to squeeze it into those little passages in the big bottle room in the... Yes. In that forest temple. Oh, that big bottle room. It was okay. It was fine. That big bottle room reminded me a little bit of Water Temple from Ocarina. It does. It does. You know? Do exactly that. Um, so I also remember in the Skyview Temple in Skyward Sword, um, the opening area was reminiscent in a little bit. It, it was stylistically reminiscent of Ocarina for me in that yeah. you're kind of, to even get there in the first place, you're climbing trees and you're jumping on ropes and you're, you know, the mm-hmm. way to get there you see it, but you can't get there. You have to go up and around and over and stuff just to get through, which is fun. And I actually did enjoy that about that part of the temple. Um, and you have to play it twice, by the way, this temple. You have to play it twice. Well, that's just that's just Skyward Sword's fault. Oh, <laughs> like, well, that whole that's game true. is like, play that everything game, yeah, two, three to, times. Yeah, so We made three definitely... areas. No, 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 that's okay. It's cool. It's like nine areas. You'll go back to every one three times. <laughs> so that's a little different about this one is that you do have to do it twice, and it's a little different the second mm-hmm. time through. Mm-hmm. So that's... First time through, you do kind of the boss is the actual first time through the boss is the actual um, dude, the suit, the, like the pseudo bad yeah. guy. Oh, yeah, he's fun. The Adrondronis kind of fellow. Gira him. If is that I, his name? If Gira I him? remember I forgot. correctly. Yeah, I think it is. Gira, Gira him, something like that. Yeah. I was less than inspired by his characterization, but um, the battle's okay. Remember how he's holding his hand out and he blocks oh, your different uh, sword hits yes. and stuff? I, oh, that one I still have trouble with Mm -hmm. because I'm trying not to, you know, telescope what I'm trying to do. Um, But I fail at it like every time as as much as I'm thinking I'm going to succeed at what I'm trying to do. I don't know. It's probably the controller itself. I can't really tell, (sighs) but I I feel like I'm doing the right thing and he catches my sword every dang time. It's hard to talk about this game without talking about the controller mechanics. You know what I mean? And I actually try very hard not to be a hater of motion controls 
when the original Wii first came out, I was a supporter. I was like, yeah, get off the couch, you lazy bum. That's cool. Let's play games where we're <laughs> yeah, moving around. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, many of these control interfaces weren't accurate enough. And I think Skyward Sword falls victim to that often. Yeah. And I think that's exemplified in this boss battle. Yeah, yeah. It's just... The idea is cool that you don't want to do, you, you don't want to have him predict what you're going to do. Like mm-hmm. the concept is cool, but the execution is not awesome, not optimal. I agree. Um, him as a character, it's fine. Uh, it's kind of like the Ocarina in that he's the the big bad final boss, but you have to, not the final boss, but you know, he's uh, the one of the main baddies in the game and you're encountering him fairly early on, just like when you're fighting Phantom Ganon. And that is an excellent observation. Ocarina. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. Tell I always considered him to be more of like a Zant type character. Oh, sure. Where it's like, hi, I'm the bad guy. But at the end, it's like. He's like the puppet. Yeah. Actually, Ganon, or bad guy. Ganon has been doing it this whole time. Yeah. They Which need to bring him in somehow, right? Sometimes It'd it's be a weird if he wasn't part of the game. Star Fox falls Ganon victim to that once in a while, too. It's like, hey, we have all these bad guys. Actually, it was Andros the whole time. <laughs> um, so that's cool. So anyway, um, maybe just a quick honorable mention is the Forest Temple and Spirit Tracks. I have not played Spirit Tracks, so I actually watched a, a Let's Play of this game. Okay. Spirit Tracks, A Link Between Worlds, and the second half of Oracle of Seasons are the three Zelda games that I have not played. Every other game I think I've pretty much played. Gotcha. Which is sometimes a problem because sometimes they blur for me a little bit. Oh, you know, yeah. I've been playing every game over the last 20 years. Well, I mean, Zelda is a little formulaic, which, you know, everyone knows. They kind of follow the same. Until Breath of the Wild, of course. Then that kind of breaks yeah, I guess you're right. But then it's Some funny because it's things. literally homaging things, but the mechanics are so different. Yeah, same cast cool. of characters, but a different uh, way to go about mm-hmm. getting places and whatnot. But um, Well, in yeah. Spirit Tracks, basically, there's a quick one. That's, I think there's also a... So you get a, mecha- a mechanic in that one where it's another one of these, like, let's play on what the the gimmick of the device is. Uh-huh. You get the gale, <laughs> the gale wind blower or something like that. Of course you do. Mm-hmm. And so there's a wind mechanic in this forest temple again. And um, your mid your mid dungeon, you know, thing is basically the Deku Leaf Blower thing. Mm-hmm. And wait a second, in Twilight Princess, you get the blower, the Gale Boomerang, but you get a literal blower later on, like in those oh, in that yeah. sand area. Oh yeah, it's like the reverse vacuum. Mm-hmm. The reverse vacuum. <laughs> well, this is basically a reverse vacuum, and you use it to blow dust away and dirt and poisonous gas and stuff. But the way you execute it is, you hold L and you literally blow into into the DS because you know oh. how Nintendo's all excited about how if you blow into the microphone into a DS you peak the audio levels and they can trigger that as a execution um uh, oh wait you've never played either of the DS Zelda games I have, have you? not I have not yeah they always get a little too clever in those games where it's like the puzzle is that you have to blow out a candle but it's like, oh, wait, I have to, in the real world, blow on the DS to blow Weird. out that candle in the game. Once you know that, it's fun. Yeah. But it's sometimes not super projected that that's the case. By the way, I think the reverse vacuum is in Skyward Sword. Are we talking about Twilight It's Princess? absolutely in Skyward Sword. You're 100% right. Because, you, you again, you use your Wiimote to aim it and blow it around. Yeah. I had less of a problem with that one. But we'll talk about that in another episode. We're kinda, yeah. We kind of have to wrap this one up. Um, you know, that, 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 that. Temple seems perfectly fine. I, I will be fully honest. I did just watch a playthrough of it, and uh, you get the you get another wind thing. You're blowing poisonous gas away. That temple though does have the hands return that pull you out. Oh joy! But what they do is they don't pull you out of the whole temple. They just pull you back. Like there's a, a secret path you need to take that mm-hmm. you learn about, and then if you don't take that path, they pull you back to the front of that path. So it's a little gotcha. bit more forgiving, <laughs> and you can stun them with your blower. You know. Okay. Which means there are times where in that game you're literally like, <laughs> like getting. <laughs> Someone's watching a kid playing this. Like, what is wrong yeah, what with are they you? Doing? Why is that little kid's screen full of spit speckles? Ooh. I mean, let's face it, it's a little kid. They spit everywhere. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I have a nephew, and Maybe like, there's that so much. Should be our tagline. So much little spit. kids. They spit everywhere. <laughs> so, Not related to Zelda at all. So many like boogers and spit come out of that kid's face. <laughs> He's one years old, and that's like all that happens. All Speaking right. of wind. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing that I wanted to bring up, which I found on the Wikipedia page while I was kind of like yes. um, re-going over these, which I totally did not pick up on before. A, the connection between wind and forest temples in general. And then I was like, oh, yeah. Mm. B, um, furores, or however you would say that, wind 
is like the forest related power that you get. In yeah, sense. sure. It's wind. And she is the f- forest or like green, you know, forest themed goddess, if you will, too. So there's that connection as well, which I was like, oh, yeah, for mm-hmm. wind. It's wind. Not- even if there isn't a forest temple, I think just about every single Zelda game does have a forest area, a forest expressed kind of area. Uh-huh. Um, the closest it gets is some of the boat ones get weird. Like Wind Waker technically has... It's a little, it's like, it's, it's a forest quote unquote, but you basically go into a big tree bulb and then, oh, it's a forest on the inside. Yeah. Um, I can't think of one that really doesn't have a forest. Maybe, maybe one of the boat, one of, maybe one of the DS boat ones, but anyway, um, any final thoughts about this? Cause we should get going. Um, the other thing I had written down, which I also learned from the Wikipedia page was that I guess forest temples are tied to the virtue of courage, which I find interesting at least for ocarina because oh. y'all need some courage to go through that creepy temple. that temple is legit emotionally <laughs> a little scary especially so if you're a kid i think in that way i see the courage connection there because yeah you usually get like a courage gem some kind of green yep so it's, that's cool know, interesting factoid and a lot of times reading. like spirit even though this, there's a lot of spirits in the forest temple in ocarina a lot of time the spirit stuff is associated to desert things which is interesting yep mm-hmm. all right cool well kate let's get out of here uh, if anybody has comments or thoughts about what we've talked about or a little bit more information or they think we've gotten something right or wrong, which is perfectly fine, we'd love to continue the conversation online. You can do so by commenting below this if you're listening to us on YouTube in our comments on our YouTube page. Uh, you can tweet us at Another Zelda Pod or you can find us on Facebook by just searching Another Zelda Podcast and leave us messages there. We would love to keep talking about this stuff. We'll do listener feedback on their upcoming episodes, and that's that. People cool. can find me personally on Twitter and Instagram by searching at Raptor Paint, or not searching, but that's my handle. And Kate, you're on Instagram. I am, and it's I only take cat pics. I love it. Wonderful. I also take non cat pics. I gave us, I cheated, and I gave us an iTunes review. And my review is, I came here for the cat content. <laughs> I was very pleased with myself. You will not be disappointed by my Instagram page. I know that much. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We will see you uh, in the next episode where we are discussing. Kate, what are we talking about in the next episode? We are talking about the all the creatures and people and whatnot that are in love with Link. That aren't Zelda. That are not Zelda. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun to talk about. It's it's so weird. We'll talk about it in that episode. But he has it's a like, lot of admirers. It's a topic that I never would have thought of, and you came to me with the idea, and I was like, brilliant. Let's do it. <laughs> so that'll be in our next episode. Yep. You'll be hearing that in a week or two from this one being posted. Thanks, everybody. Have a good time. Bye. We don't really have a send-off. Maybe it's you saying bye. 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 <laughs>